get a lot of emails to look at various devices. And while we tend to have a pretty good idea of what our audience wants to see from us, sometimes I think I just need to throw caution to the wind and check out stuff that doesn't quite fit in within our typical wheelhouse. I mean, hey, you never know when some random device or game might generate some interest from our viewers. Like these XR glasses from a company called Veecher. These are definitely not something that I'd consider making a video on normally, but you know, I heard from a friend that they're actually pretty impressive. And in an odd turn of events, the very next day after hearing about them, <laughs> Veecher themselves reached out to me and asked if I'd like to try out a pair. I said yes, but knowing that they're outside of our regular type of focus, I immediately started thinking of ways that I could make them interesting for all of you, even if it was something that the designers never even considered. And in this case, I was able to make a portable mister out of them. Hey, I bet that got your interest, right? But first, let's do our due diligence and take a look at what these glasses are and what they're capable of. So, Veecher kickstarted the development of the Veecher One XR glasses to the tune of over $3 million back in May of 2022. The XR in XR glasses stands for Extended Reality, and in the case of these in particular, they're used to project a giant, personal 120-inch display in front of the wearer. Unfortunately, it's impossible for me to show you how these look on video because of the way the technology works. It has displays and mirrors in the top portion of the lens area, and the only way to see how it works is to have two eyeballs looking into these glasses on your face. I will say that the effect can be pretty cool, but level your expectations. There's a bunch of shortcomings and incompatibilities due to the relative newness of these glasses. Stuff that'll be hopefully worked on and added with future firmware updates. So trust me, not being able to show you exactly what this stuff looks like is going to be extremely frustrating for me throughout this entire video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a macro lens on my camera to at least show you some sort of game image being displayed in the glasses. I'm sorry, that's about the best I can do in this particular situation, and it's certainly more interesting than looking at me telling you about the glasses, right? All right, I was sent the dock bundle for this video, which sells for around $600. You get a single pair of XR glasses, I chose the blue ones, a dock, which doubles as a battery and input base for connected devices via USB-C and HDMI, a Steam Deck mount and a Nintendo Switch mount, which snap onto the back of either system and hold the battery in place while you use the system with the glasses a USB-C to glasses dongle that has a charging port pass-through, and a bunch of different little accessories as well, like these little blackout lens covers and a carrying case. The XR glasses look like sunglasses, and might pass as nothing but by the typical passerby. If they were to look more closely, they'd notice a bit more going on. The bulges behind each lens house micro OLED displays, which project the game image directly in front of the user. Now, if someone were to come up and get uncomfortably in your face, they'd be able to see the game image in the lenses. But you know what? In that sort of situation, you probably have other things to think about. If you're like me and you need to wear glasses or other corrective lenses, the little myopic diopter dials on top of each lens will let you adjust the game image so that it becomes clear to you. Now, of course, that does nothing for what you see beyond the glasses, but <laughs> there's nothing we can do about that. It's just the lot in life we've been dealt. Different size nose pads are included so that the glasses will rest comfortably on your face. The smallest size were the only one that I found to be comfortable and overall usable. Everything else sat comically high on my face and made it difficult to get a good view of the display because it's not directly in front of you. It's slightly lower. The left arm has two buttons on it. The longer button is actually a rocker switch that can be used to adjust the sound volume and screen brightness, while the smaller is the mode button, which serves a variety of functions based on how many times you press it or how long you hold it down. 
For instance, a quick tap of the mode button will darken the see-through portion of the glasses, but not completely black it out. At the end of the right arm is a magnetic connector that you can attach the included USB-C cable, which can then be plugged into a PC directly or into the dock. The dock is pretty low key with four ports on it. At the center is a USB-C data and power delivery port. On the right are two USB-C ports to plug in a pair of glasses, and on the left is an HDMI input. The big old button on top powers it on with LEDs that show how much battery power remains. In general, the dock battery should add around four to six hours to whatever you have plugged into it. In its basic 2D mode, it projects a 1080p image in front of the user, what Veecher describes as being equivalent to a 120 inch television. I guess that is probably right, but you know what? I don't think it seemed that big to me. I, it really just comes down to the fact that the screens are literally just sitting right on your face. Even the smallest TV is gonna look enormous if it's just inches away from your eyeballs, right? The audio is played out via the built-in speakers inside each arm. This seems like it could be a disaster orally, but if you ask me, they sound surprisingly good. It probably helps that they're so close to your ears that you actually hear more of the nuances of a game's sound. Really quick, firmware updates are handled by going to a website and connecting the glasses via the magnetic USB-C cable to your computer. Click update on the website and that's it. Anyway, Veecher has primarily advertised the XR glasses as being used with the Steam Deck and Nintendo Switch. With the Switch, connect the system via the USB-C port in the center. That will give you docked resolutions and performance, while also keeping the system charged. With the Steam Deck, you'll just plug the glasses directly into the USB-C port on the top, and it will recognize the glasses as a secondary 1920 by 1080 monitor. If your PC has a USB-C port capable of video output, it'll work in the same way. Veecher's dock allows for some flexibility because of its own HDMI input, which was actually the thing that I was most interested in trying out because I was curious of what it would and wouldn't work with. So here's where things get a bit murky. The glasses will perform optimally at 1080p, and while they will technically display lower resolutions, they don't work correctly in the glasses. The image gets pushed to the left and the blank area surrounding the image gets filled in with odd sparkles or general visual garbage. Not even standard 720p displays correctly. The lower you go, the worse this gets. I understand that this isn't an issue for most consumers, but considering the first thing I tried with the glasses was a PlayStation 3, a system whose games tend to switch between 1080p and 720p pretty regularly, it didn't leave me exactly optimistic. So really, why start with a PlayStation 3? Well, the glasses are capable of 3D playback, so I thought this might be a good chance to see what 3D capable PS3 games were like. I never got a chance to in the past. Now you activate 3D mode by holding down the mode button for an extended period of time. PS3 was a no-go. And that's because the glasses at this point in time only support side-by-side -side 3D. And unfortunately, even then, the requirements are extremely narrow. At first, I couldn't get anything to work right, even the test video that Veecher sent me. I didn't discover until plugging the glasses directly into my laptop and turning on the 3D mode that the connected monitor display resolution was now 3840 by 1080. I put their test video in that display, made it full screen, and now it worked. Which means that the side-by-side -side 3D content has to be exactly that resolution to work. I was told that some games could be played in 3D using a program called Reshade, or some games have built-in 3D modes that might work. My 2018 PC build does not support video output over USB-C, so I had to use my Steam Deck. The only game that I owned that had side-by-side -side 3D was Rise of the Tomb Raider. And I did get it to work there, but even then, the screen was just too narrow. And that's probably because the glasses only wanted a specific resolution. It was incredibly frustrating. 
However, there is an Android-based neckband accessory that sells for around $180 that can supposedly run 3D content correctly. But you know what? I'm not sure exactly how much that would help with the issues that I've run into. So maybe the 3D stuff is just me doing something wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. But I'll tell you, it is not worth the hassle right now. There is a lot of work to be done in this respect. And I've jumped through enough hoops to get the most minor of results for now. So I'm just giving up and maybe I'll come back later. If 3D is why you might want these glasses, then I would definitely hold off for right now. So let's switch our focus back to a 2D video image then. The game image in the glasses looks decent, but you know what? I was initially surprised to hear that they were micro OLED displays. It must be due to the tech that the black levels don't seem to come close to what you typically expect from that sort of technology. But there's some annoyances that come along with the form factor and the technology in general. I had mentioned the slight downward angle of the projected screen. To compound this, I did find myself getting a bit queasy at times. I've had small issues with motion sickness in certain PlayStation VR games, but I wasn't expecting it here. Another issue is that with the 16x9 game image, the edges of the screen tend to blur or obscure, which can be a real problem in games where you have a small UI, or if that UI goes to the very edge of the screen. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a great example of this, because there's just so much information in the corner of the screens. To overcome this, triple clicking the mode button will activate a newly added 3DOF feature, which stands for 3 degrees of freedom. This will keep the floating screen in place, letting you look at the edges of the screen in a more focused manner. In practice, this isn't exactly some magic bullet for the limitations of the tech and form factor though. Firstly, it's laggy as heck. And secondly, if you look at the corners of the screen, the out of view portion is just completely cut off. Honestly, I think the best fix for this is the most obvious. Just let us adjust the scale of the projected image. Make it smaller. But let's forget about all that for now. You wanna know what doesn't go to the edge of a 1080p video image? Four by three content. I realized that classic gaming content isn't what Veecher had in mind when they made these glasses. But they do work with certain upscalers, like the RetroTINK 5X, and I was actually surprised to find that they worked with frame lock mode. Heck, even the OSSC showed up. I wish I could give you some sort of idea what the input lag is like on these glasses, but the old time sleuth ain't gonna cut it in this situation. But I will say that I don't think it's bad at all. All right, I mentioned using a mister with these glasses a while back, and it will work with the HDMI input on the dock. But here's the thing. If you have a RetroCastle's I.O. board, which can use USB-C input for power, that's right, combine the two for what amounts to a portable mister system. I guess the real downfall here, and <laughs> it's a pretty big one, is that this setup would more than double the cost of the mister itself. So it just comes down to how bad do you want it? Does an analog pocket suffice in this situation? Probably, but who knows? So I like the idea of the feature glasses and I think that some people will be really excited about using them while traveling or for other features. Hopefully they won't find the 3D stuff as frustrating as I did. But I think for me in particular, the uses for these glasses are extremely limited right now. I guess it really comes down to what you want to use them for. What didn't make sense for me might be exactly what intrigues you. And besides, the glasses are still relatively new, so hopefully there's a lot of planned improvements and upgrades in the pipeline. But you know, maybe it says something about me that the most exciting thing I found to do with them is to play the mister on them. But, I'll keep an eye on them and see how things expand in the future.